let's learn everything about UI elements and selectors in Power Automate Desktop. Today's sample page is Google Maps. Here we made a search and we have a lot of reviews. The link to this search is in the video description below. Let's go to Power Automate Desktop. We will first attach a browser instance. So I'll go up to Actions. I'll find a Launch and here I'll pick my browser. Since I've opened up the page in Edge, I'll pick that, but you can find use Chrome or Firefox. Then the launch mode. Do I want to open up a new browser instance when I start the automation? I think we will just go with an attached to running instance, but both will work as well. This makes it a little bit faster to showing the case to you. We will attach to the Microsoft Edge tab by title. And if I click this drop down, I see all open edge tabs. I only have one that is Apricots in Google Maps. I'll click it here. The variables produced, that is called browser. This is a browser instance variable that I now can refer to from this point in the flow. So I always know that my clicks will be sent in this window. Then I click save. Now we will have a click link on web page. A click link on web page just sends a click to a link or any other element on a web page. Here we can see that we are in the browser instance. And in this drop down the UI element, try to click it. We have no UI elements currently. So we will add one, click here in this blue box, and then a UI element picker wakes up. I'll just drag it over here. Now you can see when I scroll around with my mouse, different parts will be selected with red borders around it and a little element description. These are all elements, UI elements in our browser. Let's try to pick, for example, this about. So I'll press the control on my keyboard, click the left on my mouse, and now we have created our first UI element. Here you can see we will send a left click to it, and then I click save. Now let's try to run the automation by going up here, click run. Then we will see that we click the about button, so our click got sent to the about, but how did Power Automate Desktop do that? To understand the basics of UI elements, we go back to Power Automate Desktop. Here it is. Over in the upper right corner, try to click this stack of elements, that is UI elements. And here we can see our UI elements. We only have one, and that is called diff. First of all, this is the web page. This is a name that Power Automate Desktop generates. Best practice is always to rename those. So if we come back to these UI elements later, we can easily see what's going on. Let's do that first. I will right click, say rename. And here I'll just say Google reviews web page and hit enter. Now it's clearly what this is about. Then we have the UI element. You can see a little preview of it down here. And up here is the generated name by Power Automate Desktop. The diff, that is the HTML element, we will get back to that. And the above, about is the text element of this. Let's rename this a little bit better because then the button over here, the click link on web page, will all also carry a better name, which will make our flow easier maintainable. So if I right click here, say rename. So instead of diff about, let's call it button about. It's much easier to see in the code what this is about. Then try to double click it. Here you will have the selector of this UI element. You can see a selector as an address of the UI element. So when you send a postcard, you need the correct address on that postcard to have the po postcard reach its recipient. Similarly, here we need to have the right selector to have our click reach the about button. Let's talk about the selector, which you can find down here. This is a so-called child combinator selector. You can see that each layer is separated by a larger sign. A child combinator selector is always re re read from the child element, which is this diff element. We'll wait a bit with this attribute. Then this 
child element, got a diff parent, got a button great parent, got a diff great great parent, great 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 great, all the way up to this one here, diff element. Each of these elements can have attributes. Here we can see that this diff element have an attribute of text equals about, and all the way up here, this diff element got an attribute of ID equals a QA something. So we call this an attribute and we call this an attribute value. This address needs to be unique, so there will not be send these clicks to anything else than the about button. Here we will copy this selector to our clipboard. I'll open up my notepad here and then we will say about selector, hit enter and paste it in with the control B. Let's understand where this comes from. Now we move on to another important concept, which is the developer tools of the browser. So I go to Edge, Chrome got the same. Each browser got developer tools. You can either find them by clicking F12 or right clicking on an element and say inspect. I will just do an F12 here. Then you can see this developer tools open up in the button. If it looks like this, let me just click these three dots and let me say that it's stuck to the right, then it, it it's best placed in the bottom of a browser. So what you want to do here is to make sure that click these three dots here and duck it to the button. It's easier there. Then we can inspect elements. So if I click this little arrow over here, make sure I'm in the elements tab, then you can see I can hover my mouse over and different parts of the code down here gets highlighted. Let me click the about one time and then we have this line highlighted down here. What you see down here, this is the code of the web page. So the developer, web developers of Google made this for us. And Power Automate Desktop used this code to find the correct elements. For example, let me scroll down here and let me open up my notepad. Move it over here. So what we agreed what does was that the child element was a diff with a text called about. And this is exactly what you see here. You can see that there's a diff element starting here. That will be this um, smaller than, and then the diff ends here. So we say, look in a diff element with a text equal about, which is exactly this. Then the next element also needs to be true. So a selector is always written from the child and up to its parent, to its great parents and so forth. So to make this to work, then this child must have a diff parent. And you can see it here. You can see that this is the diff parent. You can see that it's different layered, it's tapped a little bit. Then we must look for a button. That is this button element. Then this button must have a diff parent. You see it have a lot of diff great parents right now, all the way up to a diff parent um, with an attribute and an attribute value called ID equals QA something. Let's see if we can find that. So if I scroll all the way up, you can see that it's in fact right here, diff ID equals to QA. So that's how you create a selector. Power Automate Desktop does this for us. And we need to have some knowledge about it ourselves because Power Automate Desktop is right in like 95% of the time. So the rest of the time we need to know how to fix these. For example, this ID here, that is usually not what we want to have in a selector because imagine that we reload this page, then this ID might change. So we want to make it a little bit more dynamic so it always works. Let's try to create some selectors of our own. So I will say alternative about selector and hit enter. Then we scroll down. Sometimes it can be very hard to find these elements. You can see we always, we already, already, I know it's here, but it, we can easily get lost. 
Then just click the arrow again, click the element that you want to identify, and we have it here. Here we could say, if we just said, look for a div element with a text call about. If there were no other div elements on this page with a text call about, this would be enough. So that could look like this, div equal, and then we want to say text equal above, about in double quotation marks. So this could be something to look for. And that is actually the child from up here. But imagine that we have two different uh, two elements, two, two different div elements with the text called about, then it will send to the first element it found on the web page, and this would be very unstable. So we might want to look for parents right here. I think it's okay, but then it could look like this. We want to say, look for a div with a div parent and a button grade parent, which is exactly this. So we can say alternative about selector, and we have this as an option. We always need to um, take in the elements as adjacent. We cannot skip an element. So this would not work if we said, look for a div with a text call about and find a parent called button. So we cannot delete this. This would not work, I repeat. You need to have all the adjacent layers in the selector. So I'll do that. Now we have two alternatives, which I think will work. And this is a little bit of try and error. Let us go back to Power Automate Desktop and try with these. Let me scroll a little bit down here in Elements. This is the selector tree. And down here you can see that this div here, let me just go do this. It finds this up here. So that's the first element you can see that is ticked, that is have a blue check mark. Here we can see that it selects the div, that is this div here, and then it finds an attribute called ID with a value called QA something. If I untick this just, then the div element will still be there. Now it will just be look for a div element and I can tick it again and it's still there. If I untick it and completely, then it will disappear like this. You can see now it's not there. Similarly, I can move all of this because now I want to create our first alternative. Let's start down here. I will only have the button div div text about. In fact, let me scroll down here. Here we can see it. We can see that let me also do this. In the last div element here, we see that we look for a text call about. And here we have another diff. So let's m remove all of this because then we can test it. We do this. So this was our second alternative. We'll start there. I can test a selector and I can just click test here. Then I want to choose a browser tab. So let me again choose the browser tab. Then we will see that it highlights the about. It gets back here and we have a green check mark. We have created a stable selection. Power selector, Power Automate Desktop tells us here that this is a stable selector. There's no other similar elements with this selector. Again, a selector is an address. Then let us go down here. So we had an alternative that was just a div text equal out. That was this up here. And similarly, I can just do this this, then we just have a div element with an attribute called with an attribute called text and a value called about. Again, I can test it. Now you can see that this also work. And we get a little green check mark. So what selector to use and let me bring up my notepad again. Which of those do we want to use? We rarely want to use this with an ID called this because this can vary each time I reload the page. So I want to avoid that unless I really have a reason to. When we see this works, I most often just go with this. Now let's try to edit our selector a little bit because could we send the click elsewhere? Yes, we could. You can see here we have an about, but we also have reviews or overview. Let's try to make a selector that can switch between these three here. So 
Let us inspect the overview. Here we have it. And here you can see we have a diff with a text called overview. So if I want to say I want a overview selector, then I could just take this up here. I could delete the above and then I want to say overview. Let me copy this. So you will get used to write these selectors. When you become a little bit more advanced developer, then this will be piece of cake for you. Let me go back here. Now let's try to, instead of writing this, I want to change this about to overview. I could go down here and change it here, or I can also use the text editor. Here we can just play it free. So if I want to do that, then you can see I have the diff text equals overview. Similarly, I can test it here. Now we have the overview and probably the reviews are the same. So if I go back here, I hit the arrow and then I want the reviews. Now you can see we have the reviews here as well. We can create a dynamic selector. Let's just talk about what a dynamic selector is. Let us, instead of this overview or about, we will create a variable here. First, let's save it. Let's just find a display input dialog here. So here I will ask the user for an input that could be about, about overview or review, and then we will send the click. So here I will say, put in overview. And again, we just do this to practice our selector knowledge. This is not something you usually want to build in, but it's nice. A nice way to practice. So here I say put in overview, review or about. And then we will store this variable. We will store that. Let's just call it text for selector. And let's disable the button press. That is just if the user click cancel, okay? To not confuse ourselves. Then we'll click save. So here we will produce an output called text text for a selector. We will use that down here in the click for web page in this click. So again, I'll go over to UI elements. I will double click. And here I'm in the text editor. In case you don't see it, then it will look like this. I'll just go into the text editor. I can mark this, click this X double click the text for selector. Now we've got a variable inserted here. This is a dynamic selector because now when I click run, we will see that we launched the browser instance and then I can put in overview, review or about. Let's say that it was actually reviews. Let's say I want to put in reviews, hit enter. Then we will see that we sent the click to reviews. Similarly, let's try to run it again. Let's send the click to overview. And this is an important concept. You will use dynamic selectors a lot. Now we will get the overview. So this was the basic. Let's try to solve a real case where we actually put this to work, all this knowledge. Let me first just do this. Let me go to reviews. And if you, in case you're already there, just refresh it. So we have a fresh opening. Then we go back here. Here, let's delete the display input dialog. Let's also delete the click link on web page. Go to UI elements. Now this UI element is not used anywhere. So what I want to do here is to click the three dots, click removed unused UI elements, and click delete. Always good practice to remove the UI elements that you don't want to use. Now, let's try to understand the case because here I have a search. We have 52 reviews. And if I scroll a little bit down, you can see we have a lot of more buttons. I want to extract all of these reviews and then I want to have ChatGPT to interpret what it says. It said here. I cannot do that right now because I need to click more on each of the review with a more present because then I get the whole text. To create that, I want to loop as long as we have a more button, I want to um, loop 
that. So let's first try to create a select for these more buttons here. I'll go all the way up. To do that, I'll open up my notepad again. And then I want to say more selector like this. Let's try to find the first one here. This is uh, this more. Before we clicked F12 to open up the developer tools, here I can just right click and click inspect. Then we have it down here. So right here, what we have, we will look for a button element. And then we could, of course, say we want uh, text equals more. But we can also try an attribute now, area label, see more. This could be a good one. We can also include its parent called span if we want that. That means that if we want to create a selector for the more button, I will say span larger than button like, like this. And then we want the attribute and its value. And over here, I can just triple click to mark it. I can say control C, control V it back here. And now we have a selector for the more button that we can try. We will probably have multiple um, elements of this down here. So we will have more, more buttons here. So let's say that I want to also inspect this. I can either right click or I can click this arrow and inspect this. Here you can see we also have a span, a button and a C more. So one strategy to solve this case could be to just uh, click on the first button uh, with a more um, with the area label called see more, then do that. Click one more, one more, one more, as long as we have elements present. Let's try that. So here I want to go back. Now we will close this. I want to go back to Power Automate Desktop. What we want to do here is that we can add a UI element. So I will click this and let us just pick the first one here, you can see the button. I press control and now we hit more, we click done. Again, we go over here, you can see that still says web page, something weird. Let's right click, rename, and here I'll say Google reviews, web page. Button, see more, that looks fine. So if I double click it here, here we can see that it almost look like uh, the one we had, we had a span button, but we also have this div element with a really um, unique ID on. This is usually not a great idea. So let move, let's move that. Let me scroll down. So here we see three elements. That is this div, this span, and this button. You can see it starts here, div, span, button. Let's move this. So this one will look for the first button with the text more and as with a span parent. Let's click say let's click test let us choose the browser tab now we will see it's this from Ida. we can also look for the, and here you can see that it found multiple of these so just pick the first let's say that we want to pick the next one here so if i go down here i can choose this ordinal ordinal equal to one you can see it adds this ordinal that means that it looks for the first element that's because it's zero indexed so if I want to look for the second element, then I want to have a one here. Then I can click save. Oh, sorry, I didn't want to do that. I want to click test. And again, I will click the apricots. Now you will see that it finds the second more. And similarly, yes, I think you already know it. Now it will find the third more. So let me remember to click test here. There you go, that was the third. So now, if we want to click more, all these more buttons, I can just loop this all the way down. So this one should be uh, fairly easy. Let's remove this ordinal. And by the way, you can see here that this was unique because there's only um, a child element with uh, the button element with the text equals more. That's the second one with the span parent. There's only one of them. This makes sense. Let's remove the ordinal again. So now we have a fairly wide selector. Now we can loop these more buttons. Let's go try do that. 
So I'll click save here. What we can do here, let's start simple. Let's have a loop. Click this here and find a loop. Let's say that we just want to loop the three first more buttons. So I'll say start from zero, end to one and increment with one. And the variables produced is called loop index. Then I want to say save. Now I can add in a click link on web page, drag it in here. I can use the selector that we just created. So I just click this drop now. I will not add a new UI element. I will just add this button see more and I'll click save. What happens here is that it will click the first more button. Then there will, there will be no more button in the first review. Then it will click the second and the third. To make completely sure, just, just refresh this review page. So it will click this, this, and this. Of course, in the perfect world, we will have all the more buttons uh, clicked, but one step at a time. Let me just click here. Now we will see that it clicks the first one. It will also click the next one. There you go. And the third one. That's how easy you can loop these elements with a little bit of selector knowledge. Let's uh, go more broader. Let's click all these more buttons. So I will refresh here and then we will go back to Power to my desktop. Now we will have another kind of loop. We will have a loop condition. So here I want a loop condition and drag it in here. A loop condition runs as long as a certain condition is true. So here I'll just say true, mark this, control C, control V, true equals true. This means that this loop condition runs over and over. Let's move this click link on web page in here and let's delete these two parts. So mark them and click delete. This, so it tries to click more button over and over a limited number of times, but this will eventually, there will be no more, more buttons on this page. So it will stop, then it will produce an error. So what we will do here is to make a little bit of error handling. So I'll have a label. I will have the label here. Here I will say no more, more buttons. And make sure that if you do error handling, there will be no spaces here. There's a temporarily bug in Power Automate Desktop. So just do like this with no spaces in. Then we will do error handling here because if this fails, it means that we have no more, more buttons. So I click here, then I click the on error. And now what I want to do is to not throw an error. That means that it stops the flow with an error. I want to continue flow run. Then I want to go to my label, no more, more buttons. If I had an, a space in this label, then we will produce an error once we click saved here. We can try that and go back. So just make it with no spaces. Let's again go back here and let me refresh if I didn't already do it. By the way, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. That will really help me and my channel a lot. I can make more videos for you. Thank you. Let's go try this. And now you will see that it click all the more buttons that is present. We might still need to scroll all the way to, to the button. But now you can see it clicks all of these more buttons. And when it can't, it, when it can't find no more, then it will stop or it should stop. Hence our error handling. I think that's it. Now you can see the automation stop and that's because it needs to scroll down if it needs to find more, more buttons. We haven't created that in this automation yet. There's a video up in the right corner where you can find that. But right now everything works here. Let's also uh, take a look at now we have clicked all of these more buttons. Now we want to extract some data and here our selector knowledge comes in because let us just first, let's just refresh the page. Now let's scroll all the way to the button just to make it a little bit harder. Now we have all of these more buttons. Once we click more, I want to ex extract the data. I want to extract the data, but I also want to, I want the name and the review, but I also want the link and here our selector knowledge comes in again. Now I go back here. So once this is done, that means that I have all the reviews. 
then I can extract the data. So here I find an extract data from web page, open up a web page, which is this. This one is um, extracting structured data, either a single data or if we have a structured data like here. I want the name. So I find this name here, I'll right click, extract element value, pick the first name, we have it here. Then go down here, click this name, right click, extract element value, pick it here. Now we have all these names, we have 52 reviews, which makes sense, we have 52 reviews. Then I also want this review here. So I just manually click here. And here we have the review in the span element, right click, extract element value, pick this. Now we are extracting all of this. So now I want the link. The link is tied to the name. But once I right click here, there's no uh, UI element in this name. So I need to find it myself. And here we have a little bit of, um, we use our advanced selector knowledge again. Because first, let's go to advanced settings. Here we can see the details of the extraction. We are extracting a table, the base selector, that is to find the first review here, and then the second and so forth. And then we have two individual CSS selectors. The first one is here, that will be the names. The second one is the reviews. Since we know that the URL is somehow tied to um, the name, then we will take the CSS selector. Control A, Control C, go to our notepad. We move it over here. And here I want to say uh, name, selector, hit enter. And here we have it. So if I can look in the name and then we can create our own selector, then it, um, we can manually insert it here. Let's just uh, cancel here. And what we want to do here is that we want to create a URL, URL selector uh, and then manually put it in here. Let's again open up the developer tools. So I will right click. And right now we can do that. So let me just click finish here, and click save. And let me just right click, click inspect. Here we can see that we have this name. Now I want to find something with a, a URL. It's not something here in this div. But if I go one back, you can see here I have a data um, hyphen ref google.com maps contribute. I think here we have it. If I just uh, triple click control C, then I will have the URL. We can see that it's not in this div with the name, but it's in the button element before. That will be this data ref. And let's first test it. So if I put it up in a browser, let me just do this. There you go. We have the either color group which was this review, we have all of the reviews of that person. So this URL is indeed working. Let me do this. Then I go back here. So what we discovered here was that we could use this selector, we could take away this div element and then just use the button and use this attribute called data ref. So what we will do here to take it up here, reuse here. And then we want to say, use the attribute call data. Now let's copy this. Let's open up this one here. So what I want to do is again to open up the extraction. We have them here. Then we go into advanced settings, we will specify an additional CSS selector, click here, click here. And then we want the data at uh, the attribute called data ref like this. When I click OK here, you can see that we now extract all of these URLs. So with your uh, selector knowledge, you're now able to extract all of these URLs. Let's just click Finish. Here we can see that we are saving it to a variable called um, data from web page. Fine for now. I click Save. Let us change the run delay to 1. Let us go to the page close the developer tools. And again, let's just refresh it to see it works. 
scroll all the way to the button again i've created a video where i scroll these infinite scroll it's up um, uh, it's in the video description if you want to see that now let's try it um so let's go back here and click run again please give this video a thumbs up if it helps you that will really help my channel a lot so now we are clicking all these more buttons before we can do the extraction and then we used our selector knowledge to also extract the urls out of these names now you'll see it, it clicks a lot of times we created the solution uh, stable so it works whether we have 52 or we have 100 that's actually how you can analyze your competition now we can extract all of these it will send like probably not 52 because each one of these person did not write a long review but it might send like 20 clicks before it is doing the extraction so we will just stay here we will talk a little bit in case you like this i've also created an advanced power automate desktop course which you find up here in the upper right corner it teaches you all the best practices around power automate desktop development so if you want to learn how to do everything right so to say how you want to scale your automations how you want all the advanced concepts then you should definitely watch that that video let us just click all the way down here food service now you can see we are almost at the button here nana anderson <clears throat> then i think we have no more more buttons now i think our automation is done so if i go back here oh, it's still uh, running i can see that now i can see this little blue now we have extracted the data so if i go over here to the right that is called data from web page 52 rows and three columns i double click here there you go we now have all our data including the urls down here we don't have any written reviews but that was fine that was expected that was actually what it said if you want to automate this infinite scrolling then you should watch this video it tells you everything you need to know about scrolling and you will get much more confident in power automate desktop development